Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Dark greetings, everyone, and welcome to Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number 266, where we talk about the Bayhem Bay Bang Ambulance. My name is Matt. I am one of your hosts for this week's pod and every week's pod, mostly. With me, my good buddy, Mysterious Mike Talent. Mike, how's it going other than being completely naked? Uh, no, it's going great, man. You know, I always like being completely naked, so everything's good. And folks, this is why we do not do a video podcast on the YouTubes or the Facebooks or any of those because we would be flagged for nudity because, uh, you know, what I'm visioning right now, no one should have to vision. So, all right, Mike, let's do this thing. Ambulance. It's a Bay Bang. You know, we all love the Michael Bay. And you know what they're calling it. I watched some interviews. They call his movies the Bayhem Universe. I don't know if you've heard that yet. No, Bayham Universe. Yeah. How did, what what is uh what makes it Bayham E? I I just being a Michael Bay movie, like Bayhem, like Mayhem. Yeah, I don't Okay. All right, all, I right, don't know. all right. I don't know. We'll get into it. We'll fig we'll try and figure it out with uh this week's newest Bay Bang ambulance where michael bay had a budget did not have an unlimited blank check like he did from netflix with six underground so mike uh why don't you go ahead and do us a favor and break this one down okay man so like you said this movie was directed by michael bay it was uh written by uh chris frederick uh lawrence minich patterson uh lars andres patterson and this movie is starring Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Yahani Abdul Mateen II, uh, Eliza Gonzalez, Garrett Dill Dillahunt, uh, Carrie O'Donnell. And this movie is about two robbers stealing ambulance after their heist goes awry. This is like the simplest sentence. It's so it's accurate straightforward it's weird good job with your uh names mike although i think it's uh i don't think it's eliza because it's e-i-z-a oh uh, i don't know man isa is it eh. isa yeah yeah it's probably isa Eh, it doesn't matter so we'll we'll just proceed forward mike what did you think of Michael Bay's first big blockbuster in several years. Uh, so it was really intense, Matt. It kind of reminded me of Speed, uh, that movie with Sandra Bullock and uh, uh, Keanu Reeves way back in early 90s. And it was just, it was intense. Uh, I don't know. And then in some ways it had some elements of heat because of the content of, uh, robbing like banks and stuff. And I, I did feel like at least it was more realistic in the amount of like, when you're taking a bunch of money, like they were supposedly doing, it takes up a lot of space and it takes up a lot of, like, it's, it's not easy to carry it all and all that. So I like that. I like that about this movie. Uh, it did seem very, uh, realistic, especially in the heist kind of scenes in the beginning. Mike, I agree with you. I, it definitely reminds me very much of speed because both films take place in LA, both take place in vehicles driving around LA, except one, they even get close to the airport in this one. They don't go on the tarmac like in speed speed, but, uh, you know, the, cops are bearing down the whole time uh except for uh the good guy is shot and dying in the back of the ambulance so it's interesting it's interesting but uh i liked it i liked it a lot i thought it was a pretty good movie i thought it was a lot of fun uh i loved all the practical effects there was a lot of practical effects 
And one thing, like I pointed out last week when we were talking about it, they clearly used someone that knows how to fly freestyle FPV drones or racing drones or something. I, I kind of want to figure out who they used because I'm sure it's someone I know of. Not personally, but know of in the industry. Because there's shots that that's straight up how people fly freestyle drones. Uh, I was going to say, Matt, um, now that you're bringing that up, I don't know if all those shots were, I, I think some of them were CG, but a, a lot of them I was like, man, this is some really cool stuff. And like the only way you could do this would be with a drone. I thought it was really neat how he, you know, tries to incorporate some of these different shots. Like, I, I guess one thing Michael Bay always does is he doesn't want to stay to the norm. He's always kind of pushing and trying different things. Yeah, I, this is the first time that other than watching YouTube videos and some small production stuff, this is the first time in a big known movie theater movie where I've seen shots like this, you know? I mean, that's straight up what they are. It's a it's a FPV racing drone going down the side of a building. That's a very well-known like thing people do. They're it's called a building dive. And yeah. Uh, that was cool man you know and then the one shot where the drone's coming at like th these cop cars and it goes underneath the cop cars as they're jumping over that was in the trailer and i was like that's either cgi or they did it with a drone and i'm pretty sure they did it with a drone they just had to have some real good timing going on matt there was there was one particular shot where i wasn't sure if it was cg or not where it basically He's like up in the air and then there's like a right angle. Like it takes like a 90 degree and then it like shoots down. That's a reason. Would drone. that be, yep. would that be like a drone uh -huh. to do that? Like, like I was like, dude, that was, that was kind of cool. Yep. Like, <laughs> yep. That's a FPV racing drone doing that. Yeah. I, I do those kind of, you know, hard rudder turns. Yep. Yeah. That, that, that was, that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I, I, I did like that. I felt like it, it, it helped enhance some of the intensity of the shots and stuff and some of the like urgency because you kind of got you know you gotten into a position where you n normally wouldn't see in a lot of movies and i i don't know like it, it i thought that was cool I, I i thought although some of the shots were really short um like they were pretty fast like the cuts and stuff but uh i thought they did add to the movie i thought it was kind of neat to, to see some of that stuff i feel like he was pushing like i mean we go mo watch movies often and i hadn't seen a lot of these kind of shots in in you know hollywood movies so like that was great no i think that's one of the best things about michael bay is that he's always trying to push the medium in another direction and see what he can do with a camera and as a photographer or former photographer i don't know i'm still a photographer i still take pictures i still, still get a photographer yeah, yeah it's yeah. just not my full-time job um i really appreciate that you know especially the use of the drones and stuff because it's an angle yeah i've seen many different times but not in a movie and a lot of people haven't seen it all and it just adds a whole another element it's really cool i i love it i love that he's pushing these things now the quick shots that's just a Michael Bay thing. You know that. He's all about, you know, showing you something and bam, he's done. Showing you something and bam, you know, just quick cuts. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I get it. It was just uh, just some of the things I, I noticed during the movie. But, yeah, uh, I, another thing I wanted to say, Matt, I mean, I, I think everyone probably knows this by now, but Michael Bay certainly has a type of actress that he prefers and this uh this uh uh eliza uh gonzalez uh definitely fits into his type <laughs> i was like man this is like a clone of of megan fox like you know just young again like just weird well and she has not been in a whole lot of stuff um she has been in Baby Driver. She was in Godzilla vs. Kong. And she was in uh, Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. So I think this is probably one of her bigger roles that she's had. But she's been around. She's been in some films. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not doubting that she hasn't been in some films. I'm just like, 
it seems like Michael Bay really has a type of of woman that he likes to highlight. Skinny young brunette. Yeah, and then you know, he, I didn't really notice any uh, circle scenes around her running through uh, precarious stuff in this one, but uh, most of the time she was just in the ambulance in this movie. Like honestly, she she like there's barely any time where she's not in the ambulance. And that's one thing that's funny is there really wasn't any circle scenes in this or circle shots, and that's what uh, the FPV drones do really really well is those circle shots. Like, they do that all the time, especially on themselves. Like, the guy that's actually flying will stand in the middle and do, like, a circle around himself. It's kind of funny. But. Yeah, there were, I I think there was a little bit of it, but not really. But, like, not, not, not to the extreme of what we would normally call a traditional Michael Bay bang. Yeah, the, the Bay Bang circle. Yeah. <laughs> the Bay yeah, Bang uh, circle. That's, that sounds yeah. a little risque. Yeah, dude, the other day I was actually watching The Rock. Uh, I think it's on Prime or something. And man, that's just a great movie. Like, it's just a great movie. Like, it's ridiculous, but it's still, it's it's just a lot of fun. And But like the circle camera stuff, like, there's a lot of it in that. A lot of it. No, dude, I love The Rock. That movie is incredible. You know, we both gave it five out of five reels. You know, we did when we reviewed it. Didn't I'm pretty sure we reviewed it. Uh, have we reviewed the rock? I'm pretty sure I'm we not did. Sure, man. If if we haven't, it's a travesty. Uh, <laughs> it is a travesty if we haven't, Mike. Um. Oh, I got one for you. Did you recognize the FBI agent? Um. He. I mean, he was he was familiar. Oh, oh no, not the FBI guy. I recognize. Well, the. The one captain guy kind of he seemed familiar, but yeah, he's been in a bunch of stuff too. Um, he's mostly known for his comedic roles. Um, that's uh Garrett uh Dillahunt. Oh God, dude, he was he was in Wedding Crashers. He was the creepy guy. Yeah, the the FBI guy. That's what I was going to tell you. Yeah, he's from Wedding Crashers. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't know. I just I just looked real quick though. I cheated. But yeah, Garrett uh, Dillahunt, the the captain, he was in Dead One and he was in No Country for Old Men and 12 Years a Slave and he was in uh, um, Fear the Walking Dead. He's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, Some some comedies, like he was in the Mindy Project and anyways, uh, he's done a lot of stuff. Um, But no, I haven't seen, uh, is it Kira O'Donnell, the guy that plays the FBI agent? I haven't seen him in like anything since The Wedding Crashers. And I immediately, when I saw him, I was like, oh my God, that's the creepy dude from the Wedding Crashers. And he plays the FBI agent. I just thought it was awesome. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah. I, I uh, Matt, well, I, I, we're not spoilers yet. So no, we're not. Never mind. Hold on. Hold and on. Whose fault I, is I that, ask, Mike? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. So, what are you drinking this uh, evening, morning, or afternoon, Matt? well michael thank you for asking sir i am drinking just a good old-fashioned four pigs kilt lifter i know nothing fancy nothing cool but for me it's my favorite beer and i'm gonna drink it if i like it all right man well that you know that's great uh i'm drinking just a normal ipa and it's just a uh, Lagunitas IPA, just a standard IPA. It's pretty good. One of your go-to IPAs. Yep, for sure, man. All right, I saw you reach behind you, Mike. You're allowed to give you a second to keep thumbing through. Make sure you get one you haven't done before. I know it is your favorite section of the podcast, Mike. You clamor for this. I feel this keeps you up at night, researching more and more dad jokes, or at least books for me to buy you to read dad jokes from mike what is this week's incredible dad joke i got dad jokes i don't think they understand though gotta think i'm funny other people never laugh though dad jokes all right matt you're gonna love this one what do you call a belt with a clock on it hmm 
a belt with a clock on it. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of something like holding back time or holding fat back or I don't know. I'm I'm missing it. No, you're close, dude. A waste of time. A waste of time. Ah, there we go. <laughs> 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 Bam! I was working it. I was working it in the head. It just, it just didn't come out. It didn't come out. Okay, Mike. So the most important question of the podcast: How does Michael's Bay's Bay Bang ambulance, with an emphasized LA, relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? <laughs> All right, Matt. So this one was a little bit trickier than I thought it would be. Uh, I kind of had to go down far on the uh, list, but I did find a uh, MCU tie-in for uh, the, the camera department. Uh, Donald uh, Reynolds Jr. worked on this movie in the camera department, and he also worked on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 as a key grip. If Michael Bay could direct any Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, character, uh, scenario, superhero, whatever, who would you want to see Michael Bay make a film of? Man, I have no idea. Uh, Somebody with a lot of explosions is kind of what I'm thinking. No one. No one coming to your head whatsoever. I know you're not as well versed in the comic world as me, but I know you have your fair share of comic books probably still at your parents' house, but I know you used to. Uh I I I have them I have them on on my person, but uh I'm trying to think. I don't know, man. Okay, we'll come know. back to you. Personally, even though it's already been done a couple times over, just because he's my favorite I would say Deadpool. I think Michael Bay doing a Deadpool movie would be amazing. The explosions, the car chases, the action would just be over the top. And I mean, could you imagine the circle camera with like, you know, like Deadpool in his red suit and like his bulge and something like really messed up and he does like the circle camera or like flies a drone like between his legs, but like looking up, you know? Oh, yeah. No, that'd be good. That'd be good. My pick would be Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, we'll continue on, Mike, and think about it in your head, and we'll come back to you. So we are now in the official, unofficial spoiler section of Ambulance. Mike, would you like to start, or are you going to fall asleep? Uh, No, no. I I, I did want to start, Matt. Part of the reason I, I... kind of pushed us towards this was I was I was thinking of a couple lines in the movie that kind of were funny or at least funny to probably funny to me and you uh often wouldn't be funny to other people I, I, and I know and, one right off the bat yeah yeah the the quote from uh the rock yep like uh and he's like I don't know what you're talking about like the other character and I was like oh this is this is kind of real life like this is very I don't know. I guess as young kids say, meta. Yeah, I think that's what it like, is. But yeah, Mike, you're you're a boomer now. Yeah. Okay, boomer. Because, <laughs> you know, when they think of The Rock, they think of The Rock Dwayne Johnson, not The Rock the film. Which is funny because that's one of the, the press tour questions that they've had for Michael Bay. Is that if Michael Bay is going to do a Rock remake and cast The Rock as the main character. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. I go see um, it. I go see it in a heartbeat. I would too. But the but who would be his counterpart? Who's going to be the uh the um Sean Connery part cuz that was such a great role. Like I feel like he added so much to that role. Like his just just him, you know, like he's just such a actor. Well, I mean, you know who it should be just for continuity would be like Nicolas Cage. But if they're just going to do like a full-on remake, um, Liam Neeson. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd work. That would work. He could use, he'd have to work on his British accent versus Scottish accent, but that would work. Like Liam Neeson would be perfect. Did you see the trailer <laughs> for his new film too? No. Oh, no. It was what one was the, it? Taken what? Yeah, it was one of the trailers before uh, Ambulance for Me. And I was like, ah, great. <laughs> Another Liam Neeson taken movie. <laughs> Well, um, and then, so that was funny. And then the other scene was the, f- the part where he's like, uh, you're like a uh, Doogie Hauser. He's like, uh, okay, boomer. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was another one. I was like, damn, are we getting that old? Uh, I, I, I thought it was funny. I kind of liked it that he was making fun of some of his own movies. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He has a good sense of humor. Very good sense of humor. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I, I just thought like I knew we would get stuff out of that, but I, I don't know if a lot of the audience would catch some of that stuff. Well, definitely not the younger kids or people that don't really watch a lot of movies because those are those are definitely Michael Bay, not so much deep cuts, but they're definitely Michael Bay cuts. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I mean. Overall, man, this is a pretty good movie. It's intense. Um, I really liked uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's acting. Like his kind of manic character was, I thought it was really great. Like he he does that well, dude. He is a very very good actor. I think he is extremely underrated. He was absolutely phenomenal in this film. But so was uh, Yaha Abdul Mateen the second. He was fantastic as well. But I mean, he's been a, in a lot of really really good stuff lately. Um, he was in, uh, uh, what it was, what Aquaman and Matrix Resurrections. He played, um, you know, uh, Morpheus and he was uh, in yes, uh, Candyman. Yes. He was the main actor in Candyman and he was absolutely fantastic in Candyman. I, I think the duo worked really, really well together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did think it worked well together and, um, it, it it's a little bit of an interesting story that they didn't really talk about much it was uh their brothers but like obviously one of them was like adopted or something but they didn't really talk about why or anything it was just kind of like he was there and their brothers like yeah i i mean i like that i thought that was cool it just it didn't really go into details about what the circumstances were yeah and i mean we really don't need it but it sure it kind of would be nice but they kept showing you know cuts back to them when they were kids and growing up together and spending time together and doing things um you know they they explain in the film that their father was a notorious aggressive bank robber that had murdered many police officers and uh, security guards and bank tellers and things like that um but the one one of the issues i have with this movie is it's long and I don't know if it needed to keep be this long and keep going. Like I thought there was a nice spot where they could have ended it. And then they just kind of kept going with it. You know what I mean, Mike? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was, it was long, but I, I don't know. It was real intense the whole time. So like I was, I was pretty much, I don't know how to say on the edge of my seat, but like, it wasn't like I was bored. Like it, there's, there's, it's just, there's something going on all the time. So. Yeah. I'm not going to say that I was bored at all. There was nonstop action from start to finish, but at one point it just kind of turns into, okay, what's going to happen to the ambulance now? What, you know, it, they could have cut some of that out. One of the most interesting I thought was when the, I don't know if they were Mexican mafia or just friends of his dad or what, but when they came in with their remote controlled, you know impala with a minigun in it and then they oh yeah dude that was that was intense that was that was crazy that was like that was like war style like you know have a bomb that like gets everybody there and then have the actual the real thing come in afterwards when everybody's all there so i don't know it was it was 
a different strategy. Yeah, it was like cartel, like mafia, like like real hard hardcore. And I think that really helped add to the film and break up some of the oh look an ambulance being chased and look it's another cop and they're going to chase it through, you know. So that's why I'm saying I think they could have taken some of the stuff, the chase scene stuff out left this in there maybe even brought it up a little bit farther or emphasize a little bit more on it because i really liked how that's kind of how the the car chase comes to an end and i thought i was it was great yeah i thought it was kind of cool that they were able to like i didn't think they were going to get there in the movie but like where they actually got to the point where the cartel people or whoever is helping them get all these ambulances and then they all leave at the same time yeah, the scramble. Or whatever. Yep. Yeah, like I thought that was, you know, that's brilliant, right? Fast and like, Furious that's... style, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that that would throw off like some of the helicopters and stuff. I mean, all, all it does is, you know, split off the group because they still had so many resources. But at least it's less of the whole, you know, so. Mike, you all right? You hanging in there? Yeah, man. I'm still Okay, here. good. Okay, good. I'm just trying to make sure you're still alive and well and staying awake. For those of you who do not know, Mike is very, very tired. Like he always is. It's, you know, we're recording a little early, so he's even more tired than he normally tired is tired. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For all those things, yes. Uh Oh, there was something I was going to talk about. Um Ah, yes. That's what it was. So one way I thought Michael Bay was going to go with this film, and he didn't. I, I want to say I'm disappointed, but I wasn't disappointed. I was quite satisfied with how the film ended. Um, I think it could have ended differently, but I wasn't disappointed. I thought for sure Michael Bay was going to have the villains win. I really thought, at the specifically the cartel scene, when they roll into the cartel, that they were just going to shoot the cop and shoot the paramedic chick and that was the end of the movie and nope it just kept going oh okay interesting yeah i mean kind of the whole movie you're kind of stuck in a weird juxtaposition of i'm kind of rooting for the bad guy right now but i'm not sure if that's good or bad right you know like like it's it's a weird view you know usually we're we're rooting for the good guys, but these guys clearly were not the good guys. They just, they were robbing a bank. They know they were robbing a bank. They know they messed up. Like it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. No. And the cartel, I mean, they're really bad guys, but that whole scene and what they did and all, how they helped them out was very interesting and very cool. And I don't want to say it was cool because of the pure, unadulterated violence against police officers it was just a cool scene so i don't know i think mike so my mom was asking me because she watched the film today um i'm sure you'll hear her review at the end of this podcast mike did you catch on at who took down jake gyllenhaal at the end oh yeah it was it was his brother okay good because my mom and dad were a little confused and i'm like no granted they don't blatantly say it but they show him holding his ar-15 pistol and they show the bullet go through his chest in reverse you know where if it was shooting from the front it would have you know been a small hole with a bigger hole in the back and it was the opposite anyways okay mike let's do this thing since i'm losing you and we need to keep you awake so you can go to bed here in five or ten minutes mike how many reels do you give ambulance um, I think I'm going to give this one uh four out of five reels because, you know, I had I had a bit of fun on this one and I, I liked some of the way the, the things were shot. So I'm going to go four out of five reels. Well, Mike, we agree again. I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. It is a Bay Bang and I love me some good old fashioned Michael Bay. He's one of my favorite directors. He's not my favorite director of all time, but he's, he's definitely in my top 10 easily. I think he's fantastic. I love what he does. I love his action movies. You just, you're never bored when you go and watch a Michael Bay movie, unless it's Transformers. But even then, those are still pretty fun. The stories might be crap, but they're still pretty fun movies. 
Yeah, yeah. The first ones were much more entertaining, I think, than the second, third, fourth, and fifth. But anyway, you know, whatever. Yeah, they are good. All right, Mike. So are you anxious to hear which movie I picked for next week's review? I am, Matt. I am. I have no idea. Okay, so there's been several films that have come out recently on Netflix and Amazon, and I was trying to decide between three of them. Now, most of you have probably never even heard of this movie. I heard about it. Uh, I've watched the trailer for it. I think it looks awesome. Mike, I think it's going to be a world of freaking nostalgia for me and you. It's basically going to be hearkening back to our lives of coming of age. It's called Metal Lords on Netflix. Oh, is this about the the, the band who, who... Yeah, no, this, this is going to be great. Oh, here you go, here you go. Here's the description from IMDb. And it's an hour and 37 minutes, so it's a good, solid, you know... But it's a coming-of-age story. Here you go. It's two friends try to form a heavy metal band with a cellist for a battle of the bands. Yeah, dude. This is right up our alley. Uh, We're going to have a great time with this one. You want to know the biggest name attached to it? I mean, a couple of the kid actors are fairly big, well-known. But the biggest name by far attached to this film is the writer. The writer is D.B. Weiss. Okay, awesome. Lord of the Rings, for those of you who do not get the reference but yeah he's one of the creators and writers of lord of the rings so it's fun it's heart i I haven't watched it yet but the trailer is funny it's fun it's a feel-good movie uh it's about metal you can't go wrong i think it's gonna be a lot of fun mike heck yeah man looking forward to to streaming it man well that's all i got mike why don't you do your thing All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, uh, you know, go out there, stream a movie. Maybe go watch a movie at the theater. They love that. And uh, we'll catch you on the next pod. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Matt Hinshaw from the Real Film Nerds podcast in studio with me this morning on Magic to talk about the movies. One in particular, Ambulance, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How are you doing there, Matt? I think I'm doing better than you possibly. I don't know. I'm pretty tired, but I think you got me beat. You think so? Yeah, I think so. What makes you think I'm tired? Because you drove in from Phoenix. <laughs> you just told me that. So what did you think of the movie Ambulance? I loved it. It's Michael Bay at his best. You loved it. Yeah, I was surprised to see that it got 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. Why do you think? Maybe because it's kind of lengthy and okay. it kind of just starts repeating itself. But okay. that's Michael Bay's big action blockbusters. Yeah. You know, they start, especially, I mean, there's only so much you can do with an ambulance that's constantly driving. Right. So right. it's kind of like speed in a way. I was just going to ask you. Okay, it is. Kind of, yeah. All yeah, right. except for there's no speed limit and they can go wherever they want, but they're trying to get away. Okay. And it's, it has a bank robbery. So it's like a combination of like heat mm-hmm. and speed. Okay. Yeah, you know what Scott Dando said when we were looking at the previews? He's like that looks very stressful. Was it stressful? No, because I wasn't driving the ambulance. <laughs> if right. I was driving the ambulance, then yeah, it probably yeah, would have been. Yeah, for sure, but right? Okay, no. who's in the movie? And were it's they good? Jake Gyllenhaal and Abdul, you, I can't pronounce his name. He has okay. a really long name. Okay. He's uh, from a bunch of stuff. Very good. And how many reels are you going to give it? I give it four out of five reels because it was awesome. Four out of five reels because it was awesome. It was just fun. It's an yeah. action blockbuster. It's, yeah. You know, it, it's... It's nothing on the level of Michael Bay's, you know, The Rock. That that movie's incredible. And there's some throwbacks and call-outs to Michael Bay's previous films in this. Yeah. Oh, that's but cool. But they used one thing they that I really, really like. They use um, uh, first-person view drones, mm. like racing drones, to shoot some of the footage. And cool. they brought in a, I think it was a 19 or 20-year-old kid to do it. Wow. And that's one of the things I do for a hobby at times is that. And I immediately could call out those scenes. Yeah. I've never seen that in a movie before. Oh, very cool. So I, it's really neat. I bet it is something we'll see in the movies in the future. I think so. I yeah. think Michael Bay is one of those directors that likes to break boundaries and push the limits and try and do new things with every single film he can. Right. And so th- he's the first one doing this. Okay. And I bet you he's going to set a 
Set a bar. Set a precedence. Okay, yeah. so um, I want to tell you that the movie Ambulance came in fourth place at the box office. Guess what came in number one? Oh, the one my mom saw, Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> All right, your mom going to review that for us? Yeah, she saw Ambulance, too. She, she went to did. two movies. Oh, so. look at her go. All yeah, right. she's an animal. Let's give Ma Hinshaw a call coming up next on Magic 99.1. Morning. Good morning, Ma Hinshaw on Magic 99.1. How you doing? Doing fine. I heard that you went to see two movies this past week. I did. <laughs> wow. Okay, you saw um, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, right? Right. And you also and saw Ambulance. Darling. Yes. Okay. And what did you think of Ambulance? Uh, I thought it was good. I liked it. The chase was a little bit long. If you love car crashes, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, I thought it had a very good plot, too. It, it was very interesting. A lot of twists you wouldn't think would be in there. Uh, sorry, we didn't. there weren't more people that went when we went, but uh, I thought it was good. Okay, very good. Were there any snores? During ambulance? Well, yeah. <laughs> a, couple, a couple, you know. Okay, very good. How many cookies are you going to give ambulance? Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay, Matt gave it four wow. out of five. She's harsh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's more, it's more your kind of movie than it is. maybe hers. Yeah, and I love yeah. Jake Hall. He did a wonderful job. He did. Okay, he now did. tell us all about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. How was that? Well, it was very pretty. And I'd say it was really good for the three-year-old to seven-year-old crowd. <laughs> they were laughing and screaming, and they thought it was really, really fun. Yeah. I thought it was fun, but not as much, you know. Yeah. Uh, but then, I, I mean, I used to watch my kids play Sonic, but I don't know where this plot came from. Okay. There was one part, though, that had a wedding that was a real hoot. It was very funny. How funny. Well, it came in number one at the box office this weekend. How many cookies are you giving Sonic the Hedgehog to? Uh, uh, you're making her three. <laughs> three. Okay, so not as high as Ambulance. Very interesting, Ma. No, no. No. Now, did but pa, it was cute. Did Pa Hinshaw see the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with you? Oh, yes, and he really took a long nap. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he did. It was only one snore, but it was for an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yes, it was an hour and a half snore. That's I love it. I, I okay. would say, okay. Well, that kind of makes sense to me. Morbius came in second place, The Lost City third, and Batman took oh. the fifth place position at the box office over the weekend. Huh. Yeah. Well, at least people are going and seeing movies. Yeah, That's a good thing. At least people are going and yes. seeing oh, movies. Oh, for Sonic, the whole place was full. I'm sure. And full of kids. And it, it, that was awesome to hear them all laughing and giggling and stuff. And it's good for, it's a great movie for kids. Okay. Absolutely. Very good, Ma. Hinshaw, thank you so much for reporting for us on what station? Uh, Magic 99.1, I think. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bye. You, bye. You guys got to check out Matt's podcast. It's called The Real Film Nerds. What are we going to be talking about next week? So this movie just dropped on Friday on the old Netflix. Yeah. It's called Metal Lords. Metal Lords. Have you heard of it? No. Yeah, you and no one else. <laughs> but I, I lo found it. I hunted it down. I'm excited for it. I think yeah. it'll be fun. It's uh, written by one of the creators of the Game of Thrones film. Okay. Not film, TV show. Okay. TV show. Um, and it's about coming of age of three high school kids that form together a metal band to <laughs> battle in battle of the bands. Okay. And one guy is a hardcore metal guy from the beginning. The other one is kind of wishy-washy. And then they recruit a young lady who is a cellist. A to chest. be their bass player. I so love it. That'll I think be good. it'll be fun. That I think sounds it'll really be, cute. You know, heartfelt and yeah. goofy and fun. Yeah. Okay. So. Very good. Matt, thanks for coming in this morning and hanging out with me on Magic. You're welcome, Lisa.